Let me talk about this main event here. It's John Moxley versus the lawyer, Mark Sterling. So a few things. First off, Mark Sterling is MGF's lawyer. MGF is the top heel, and he's an asshole. So throughout the show, he's berating the lawyer who does not want to be in a wrestling match. So by the time the match rolls around, you feel bad for the lawyer. Which, by the way, that takes a lot to feel bad for a lawyer. That's number one. Number two, I thought I knew exactly where this was going. Moxley beats the shit out of this guy in 10 seconds. He drops him on his head. The moment the bell rings, MJF has torn off the neck brace, jumped out of the wheelchair, and he's beating the shit out of Moxley. That is not what happened. Moxley and the lawyer go like five minutes doing comedy. And as we have learned from Orange Cassidy, comedy in front of no fans is death. These fans are dead. Nobody's laughing. It's, it was just dying. But I will say, it did lead to maybe the greatest part of this show. When after five minutes, I'm dying for this to be over. John Moxley finally looks at him and he says, This is terrible television. And he boots him and he gets his fucking DDT and pins him. That was almost worth having to sit through all of this. It I wasn't. Not, I did not catch that. I fucking was dying. It's just, it's so bad. And finally Moxley says, This is terrible television. He boots him, gives him the implant DDT. God bless John Moxley. God bless him. He is awesome. He's amazing. Yeah. Um, the the, the post-match, we talked about this last week, what had to happen. The post-match went exactly like we thought. The match itself. So not only did they make the lawyer sympathetic, not only did they do, instead of doing a 20-second beatdown, they did five minutes of comedy to get to the end that we all knew was coming anyway. It's my... The thing... It's always driven me nuts about this angle where guys are forced to wrestle. If you are in a match and you don't want to be in the match, submit. Lay down and get pinned. That's all you have to do. And the match will end and you can go on with your life. It, it, Mark Sterling had nothing to gain here by fighting. So once it went more than like 30 seconds and he's in there trying to do eye pokes and stuff, why? Why did he just lie down? Why didn't he quit the first time MJF grabbed a, or uh, Moxley grabbed a headlock? So it goes way too long. It's not funny. It's not entertaining. And it gets to the result that we all knew was coming anyway. So Moxley at least won. <laughs> I guess that's a plus. He did win with a paradigm shift. I wrote down, what was the point of this? And then Wardlow immediately attacks, destroys Moxley, hits the F10. Now Moxley is helpless. Now MGF appears and removes his neck brace and unloads on Moxley, puts on the ring, bloodies him with it. We did hear Moxley telling him, go fucking nuts, as he bloodied him up and smeared the blood everywhere. And then that was it. And the show ends with MJF posing over Moxley's bloody body. And it felt like I was what had to happen, but it felt so predictable. It felt so obvious that they just did what they did because that's what you're supposed to do. And then it ended. And that was the end of the show. It was predictable and obvious, and it's much. I, I, but that, I, I mean, that happens in wrestling. But I think the problem was the thing that was the most predictable. They didn't do, which is kill the lawyer immediately. Yeah, kill the lawyer immediately and have MJF jump him from behind immediately and massacre the guy. I think it would have come off way better. Like I, 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 I appreciate that they showed that Moxie wasn't hurt because apparently some people thought he actually was, which blows my mind. But they tried to get heat on the guy. He got heat. He bloodied him up. But it was it was so hard to get back into this after the fucking five minute lawyer segment. Yeah. Yeah, and that was the end of Dynamite, and it was not a particularly good one. I think it was the worst Dynamite of the year, actually. It's, it's up there. It's up there. So we're voting again. Oh, uh, you know what's funny though, what's and up? I guess it doesn't. Well, I, I guess we'll find out when we get the quarters. But fun fact. The last three go-home shows for AEW pay-per-views have all done average 
or below average numbers. Okay. This is the first time that they have done a huge number for the go-home show. Right. So I guess we'll see. I mean, I thought this show, I thought this was not good, especially the second hour. The first hour actually was all right. The second hour, it went off a cliff, but what did everyone else think? Maybe they may, maybe they maintain their audience for the whole two hours. I don't know. Maybe it started at 1.2 million and fell off a cliff for the end of the show. I don't know. All I know is they had more people watching this than any go home show they've ever had, and so we'll see what that means for the pay per view at next Wednesday. 